of baptism, Mary Heslin died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. In life, Mary cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Mary received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Just as Jesus died and rose again, so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. And as in Adam all die, so also in Christ will all be brought to life. Hallelujah. Now, I think there are some mementos that are going to be presented uh, in remembrance of Mary's life, as a tribute to Mary's life. Eva is bringing up the bread and wine for the offertory today.
And then we have Anthony. Anthony is bringing up my mother's rosary beads as a sign of her faith. So she had all her life until the, the last. Aoife is bringing up her bingo board. It's bingo she loved to go and meet with the people in the chat and get the gossip for the week and see what happened. Cody is bringing up a wooden spoon to represent Mammy's love for bacon and cooking and there was nobody that ever left the house hungry. She fed us all. Caitlin is bringing up the tea and the kettle was always on the buy and a cup of tea was for everybody and the tea leaves represents Mammy's love for that. And Circa is bringing up a picture of Mammy and Daddy, a sign of their everlasting love together. And she also has a picture of Caelan and Daniel who can't be with us today, but they're in our thoughts and in our prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to St. Bridget's Church, Mount Nugent. I want, first of all, to offer the deepest and most prayerful sympathies of everyone here on the death of Mary Heslin. I welcome her loving husband, Pat, daughter, Selena, Liz, and Patricia, son, Johnny, cherished grandchildren, Kaelin, Sarka, Caitlin, Kiefer, Cody, Aoife, and Anthony, brother Sean and Ned, daughter-in-law Chrissy, sons-in-law Stephen, Vinnie, and James, sister-in-law Nancy, nieces, nephews, relatives, neighbors, and friends. Dearly beloved family and friends, we gather here today in the shadow of loss, surrounded by the echoes of grief that seem to pierce the air. Yet even in this somber moment, we find ourselves enveloped by the warmth of a season that speaks of new hope and fresh beginnings, the season of Easter. It would be impossible to exaggerate the value of hope. Hope is to the spirit what bread is to the body. Even if it comes only in intermittent flashes like the beams of a lighthouse, it will suffice. Our hearts go out in sincere sympathy to all of the Heslin family, and the, the Riley f families, and, and, and all the relatives of Mary, as we commend her to the mercy of God. We know that this world can never fulfill our deepest hopes and longings. Only God can do that. God has made promises to us in Christ. Those promises are the basis of our hope. Mary has finished with earthly hopes. We are gathered here to pray for her commend her soul to Almighty God and to comfort her family by our prayers, our presence, and our words and gestures of consolation. Let us begin by reflecting on the words of Scripture, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man to imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Brothers and sisters, prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And uh, as it is Easter week, we'll say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who, the, who through the ending of present things, open up the beginning of things to come. 
Grant, we pray, that the soul of your servant, Mary Heslin, may be led by you to attain the inheritance of eternal redemption through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite as our readers uh, for the first and second reading, Myra and Bernie, to come forward. We prepare worldly to hear God's word today. Oh, that today you listen to his voice, harden not your heart. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Sam, response. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Response. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. Response. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Response. Surely kindness and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response. A reading from the book of the Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as a beautiful bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne. You see the city. Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more sadness, and no more mourning. The world of the past is gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke, Now I am making the whole of creation new. I will give water from the well of life free to anybody who is thirsty. It is rightful inheritance of the one who proves victorious. And I will be in his God and he a son to me. This is the word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On arriving at Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother said, Jesus to her will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the gospel wipe away our sins. Our hearts go out in sincere sympathy, in sincere sympathy to all of Mary Heslin's family and friends, in particular, in particular to her loving husband, Pat, her daughter, Selena, Liz, and Patricia, son, Johnny's cherished grandchildren, Kaylin, Sarsha, Caitlin, Kifa, Cody, Aoife and Anthony, brothers Sean and Ned, daughter-in-law Chrissy, sons-in-law Stephen, Vinnie and James, sister-in-law Nancy, nieces, nephews, relatives, neighbours and friends. Today as we gather to bid farewell to Mary, we find ourselves enveloped in a bittersweet moment. For on this Easter Tuesday morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in this Easter week, we also mourn the passing of a cherished member of our community. Yet even in the midst of our sorrow, we are reminded of the profound hope and promise that Easter brings. Our dear departed Mary Heslin has journeyed from this life into the arms of our Savior, embracing the eternal joy promised to all who believe in him. Just as Christ conquered death and rose triumphant from the grave, so too does Mary now experience the fullness of life in his glorious presence. In the Gospel of St. John, Jesus tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though he die. These words resonate deeply within our hearts today, filling us with the assurance that our beloved Mary is not lost to us, but has been called to dwell in the everlasting embrace of God. As we reflect upon the life of our dear departed Mary, let us remember the countless moments of love, laughter, and joy that she brought into the lives of all those dear and dear to her. Her children and grandchildren can cherish the memories that you share together and draw strength from the legacy of faith and devotion she leaves behind. For just as the dawn breaks forth on Easter morning, dispelling the darkness of night, so too does the promise of resurrection bring light and hope into our lives. Though we may grieve the loss of Mary, we do so with the joyful expectation of being reunited with her in the kingdom of heaven. May the hope of Easter fill your hearts with comfort and peace, knowing that Mary now rests in the loving arms of our risen Lord. And may you in turn embrace the promise of new life that Easter brings, living each day with faith, hope, and love until we are reunited once more in the presence of God. Last Sunday I spoke about the phoenix, which was thought to be a hypothetical bird in Greek mythology rising from the ashes after it has been consumed by fire, which symbolizes immortality, resurrection, and life after death. It sums up the Easter message perfectly. Jesus gave up his life, and from the grave he was raised to life again on the third day. New life rises from the ashes of death. Every Easter Sunday we are celebrating Christ's victory over the grave, the gift of eternal life for all who believe in Jesus. That is why the phoenix was one of the earliest symbols of the risen Christ, Phoenix also symbolizes our daily rising to new life. Every day, like the phoenix, we rise from the ashes of sin and guilt and are refreshed and renewed by our living Lord and Savior with his forgiveness and the assurance that he still loves us and will continue to give us the strength we need. It was a great privilege to have had the opportunity to visit Mary on Holy Saturday night and gather around her with, her, with all her family, young and old, for the anointing of the sick, the rosary, and the rite of the commendation of the dying. I thought it was lovely for her grandchildren to hear those words from that 
ceremony, go forth, faithful Christian. May you live in peace this day. And Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me in my last agony. It was the vindication of all her little unremembered acts of kindness and of love to both her immediate and extended family. Mary was undoubtedly a woman of faith. Her faith led her to lead a life that was inspired by a higher prudence of following the commandments, nourishing her faith in the Sunday Mass, working hard throughout the week. One could say that she was a hard-working, seriously-minded person who served her family faithfully, loyally, and well. Her faith sustained her in her life's journey. When we look at some of the readings for the funeral mass, they are, they are rich food for the journey of life. The eternal wisdom of the book of Ecclesiastes reminding us that there is indeed a time for everything and that in some mysterious and extraordinary way we are invited to trust in the plan of, of a loving God. We look to the extraordinary words of St. Paul, as for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. No words could better describe what Mary has lived for. Believing in Jesus' resurrection is the core of our Christian belief, is the basis of our Christian faith. There would not be any Gospels without the resurrection. There would be no Christianity, no church. Unlike, there, would, un, there would be, a, it's unlikely that there would be a priesthood, the sacraments. There would be no sacraments without the resurrection. There would not be hope without the resurrection. But we would not have resurrection without the death of Jesus Christ. We can't get flowers, fruits, and trees unless the seed is sown. The seed has to die in order to germinate a new plant. Therefore, St. Paul preached not only the resurrection, but also the crucifixion of Christ. We are the followers of Christ who is risen from the dead. St. Paul reminds us that the death is not the end of our human being. It is the beginning of a new transformed life. Preface for the dead in the Roman Missal tells us that the life of the faithful is not over, it is only changed. When the earthly dwelling is turned to dust, an earthly dwelling, an eternal dwelling, is made ready for them in heaven. So death is the doorway to a new life. Every person in this world has to go through it. Jesus, the Son of God, also did not escape from it. He accepted to die for you and me accepted death, and has given us the rewards of eternal life. Those who believe in Christ, God will also raise up. Mary believed in Christ. She was baptized in Christ. She nourished her body with the most holy body and blood of Christ. Every time when she participated in the Holy Eucharist, she was anointed by the most holy oils and was confirmed by the Holy Spirit. She received the sacrament of reconciliation and was reconciled with God and his people She received Christ through these sacraments and gave Jesus to all of us through her love. She was the most wonderful mother and grandmother, sister, friend to most of you. She chose to be a wife, mother, homemaker, grandmother, who I'm sure often found light in the great corridors of her existence through her faith and loyalty to the church. She reached out to you as only a mother would when you were in difficult situations. She stood by you. This is how she shared with you Jesus, who she received in the sacraments. She toiled and worked especially for her children and grandchildren so that they could stand on their feet. Every mother, when she dies, she carries with her all her pain and sorrow, which are not shared with any but leaving behind the legacy of motherhood. As we thank God for her life and for her calling in Christian life, let us place her in the hands of our blessed mother. She understands our pain and suffering. May she intercede for her. May our Lord Grant to Mary eternal rest in his heavenly kingdom. May her gentle soul rest in peace. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. Now, I invite you, I invite our readers to come forward for the prayer of the faithful.
Let us now pray and trust for Christ, who shows in word and deed that the little ones are precious to him and to the Father. We pray for Mary, our nanny, and thank God for her life and her wonderful gifts that she's left with us all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for who, we pray for all who cared for nanny through her short illness, to the paramedics, her carers, Martina, Sarah, Debbie, Tara, Stacy, Stephen, and the pallet of care of Calvin and Monaghan. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Caelan, who can't be with us today. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our family, friends, and good neighbours that helped us all through Nanny's short illness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the deceased members of the Riley and Heslin family, <coughs> especially Francis Heslin. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who is sick at the moment, especially our Auntie Nancy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray the Lord the harvest to send laborers into his harvest and that the young people of our time will find that, gener that generosity of spirit to serve God in the priesthood and religious life. Lord, hear us. Lord, may you support us, may you support us all day long till the shadows lengthen and evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. We ask this through Christ our Lord. and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that, our, that your departed servant Mary Heslin may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and ever heard to give you a thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life. And so at the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the power of working in the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you with the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Mary Heslin, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, and from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you our God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gamish Kalanahar Fui Maravun Arsalan Hordunienu, or Naharatar Nyav, Gune Ferdanu. Gadaga the Rich, Ganyenter the Huller and Talib Marienter are now. Arn Ron Lehul, Turdun and you, August Maduan Arvioka, Marwahamidna Darvikunafin, August Nolik Shinigahu, Oxair Shinawak. Sir Shinogok Gulk and Pimidor to hear in a tower doing Gikinal to Shiochan and Erlin, on his Gamemi Lukun of the Rokra, Sir on Baki Goni, August Lawn and Ilabort. August Shin Exul Leshin Dokus Nefa, August Let Shock Der Slana Hor Isa Christ, Oris Lats and Riok Dugs and Cook Dugs and Lore, Sri Hail Nasail. 
And here in the East, the crease, the dirtle, the gospel, fog, and she'll kind of give, took him to even a she'll kind no fair car back in a car crowd of Douglas. John takes she'll kind of hearty, yuggers he ain't too, free mirrors to let me in. That's the war not going to be lean, three hail and a sail of men. She'll kind of tear and a living gun, he yuggers led the spirit. A frolicky car heart has she'll kind of duck here, the lads offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. By the blood of Christ, keep me safe eternal life.
Lord, whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live, and whoever lives and believes in me will not die forever. Hallelujah. I invite Anne-Marie now to come forward to give a little reflection. The Mother's Crown. Heaven lit up with a mighty presence as the angels all looked down. Today the Lord was placing the jewels into our Mother's Crown. He held up a golden crown as our darling Mother looked on. He said in his gentle voice, I will now explain each one. The first gem he said is a ruby and it's for endurance alone, for all the nights you waited up for your children to come home, for all the nights by their bedside you stayed till the fever went down, for nursing every little wind I add this ruby to your crown. An emerald I'll place by the ruby for leading your children in the right way, for teaching them the lessons that made them who they are today. For always being right there through all life's important events, I give you a sapphire stone for the time and love you spent. For untying the strings that held them when they grew up and left home, I give you this one for courage. Then the Lord added a garnet stone. I'll place a stone of amethyst, he said, for all the times you spent on your knees when you asked if I'd take care of your children and then for having faith in me. I have a pearl for every little sacrifice that you made without them even knowing, for all the times you went without to keep them happy, healthy and growing. And last of all, I have a diamond, the greatest one of all, for sharing unconditional love, whether they were big or small. It was your love that helped them grow, feeling safe and happy and proud. A love so strong and pure, it could shift the darkest cloud. After the Lord placed the last jewel, he said, Your crown is now complete. You've earned your place in heaven with your children at your feet.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Mary Heston, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of life and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you to all who have helped out today. Thank to GA for providing the guard of honor here at the reception, the beginning of the Mass, our servers, and Chrissy for lending a hand here uh, with this, with, with, uh, as, as, as our sacristan. All, all our readers, uh, Anne Gallagher for leading us in music and song, and all of you for coming out in force this morning to support the Heslin and Riley families in this time of grief and loss and the pain of separation. After the final prayers, uh, the congregation will have an opportunity to sympathize with all of the next of kin. Uh, we just ask you to file past uh, the just not to shake hands, just to file past. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. The Lord, may Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Let us bless the Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Now the casket will be blessed with holy water, reminding us of our baptismal sharing, Christ's redeeming passion, death, and resurrection.
Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who call you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive, his, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Mary Heslin, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite the congregation starting on my left to file past here uh, at the front of the sanctuary, uh, followed by the second aisle and then the center aisle.
Place of rest. Still I 